Master Carpenter Matt Jackson, inviting you to spend a few minutes with a master. And by a few minutes, I pretty much mean a few minutes. With a busy work and life schedule these days, it's tough to squeeze everything in. I'm working on a sawhorse build video for these guys back here. I've been working on that for a couple of months, actually. Haven't been able to get that thing cranked out. But I wanted to throw a quick tip in here that shows how I'm able to supersize the capacity of my joiner. Everyone knows it's easy to flatten a board up to the width capacity of a joiner. In a single pass, it works just fine. But the project I'm working on, which is this floating vanity cabinet back here, has drawer fronts and doors that are both more than eight inches in width. But I still need to make them perfectly flat so that they work on the cabinet. So my challenge is how to flatten the board that's wider than the capacity of my joiner. So I call it supersizing the joiner. It's a really simple process and it allows me to flatten the board with an 8 inch joiner up to the capacity of my thickness planer, which is in this case 13 inches. I've got to go 11 and a half inches for the doors, but the drawer fronts are just a little over 8, so that's what I'm going to use for an example. I'm just going to flatten some 9 inch boards with this process, and it works for anything between the 8 inch capacity of the joiner up to the 13 inch capacity of the thickness planer. So I'll show you how it works. I'm not going to go too deep into the weeds about how to run a joiner, but the basic process is taking a twisted or cupped board and just running it across the infeed table. The cutter evens out the surface and it slides across the outfeed table. Once one surface of the board is flat, that gets laid on the platen of the thickness planer where the cutters and the planer smooth off the top surface and make the two surfaces completely parallel. That's all simple enough. The challenge comes in when the bore that needs to be flattened is wider than the cutter head on the joiner. First off, it hits the guard and it won't go through. Second off, there'll be a flat surface eight inches wide and then there'll be a lug on the side from the part of the board that hangs over the table. So when the width of the boards that I need to plane exceeds the capacity of the joiner, these are the steps I take to supersize that capacity. First off, I remove the guard and I don't take that action lightly. The cutter head's totally exposed and I need to pay attention to that. On a short board like this or any board that is up to about the length of the infeed table, I don't need to take off the rabbiting shelf. I can use one pass to smooth the bottom of the board and not have to worry about that. I want to keep this video short, so I'm not going to go in depth into how to adapt this process for a really wide board or one that's extra long with a lot of cup and twist in it, but rather I'll just cover the steps for a pretty straightforward board like this. The main difference in the process is that as long as I can do the whole flattening process on the board in one pass, I can leave the rabbiting ledge on. If it's going to take multiple passes to get the board flat, and get the twist out of it, I have to take the rabbiting ledge off because after the first pass, the lug will hit this and it throws everything out. If anybody has any questions about that, ask it in the comments and I'll try to explain it a little further. But as it is, I'm just going to flatten the face of this board, get it flat and smooth. I'll put that squiggle reference mark on there so you can see the process in action. And this is a pretty flat straight board. I don't have a lot to do. So I'm just going to take a minimal pass at just under a sixteenth of an inch. As you can see here how the process is working. This is flat and smooth. This is the lug that's left over. It hangs over the edge of the table. This is the part that hasn't been planed yet. And there's actually a little spot on this corner that a pass of this depth didn't clean up, but that's okay because the majority of this surface is flat and without twist, cup, or bow. Complete respect for that cutter head when it's totally exposed is the only sensible thing. All right, now you can see that this whole surface is flat and clean. There's squiggle lines remaining on the lug of this board. I think you can see the step here. This is the thickness of the pass I just took. If I were to run this board through here again, 
You can see that the lug hits this table, twists the board, and throws everything off. So with the rabbit ledge on, you only get one pass to make it right. If you've got long, really twisted, or really bowed boards that are going to take more than one pass, take the rabbit ledge off and run the passes until you've got a clean, smooth, flat surface as a reference for the thickness planing process. So this is where the tip comes in. It should make sense by looking at this that if I were to run this through the thickness planer, the lug would throw off the accuracy of this plain surface. The board would go through twisted. Any bow or cup that's in that lug would ride on the table and just transfer that bow or twist or cup to the other side of the board. Bow or the twist, not the cup. So I need to reference this flat surface as it's going through the thickness planer so that this surface comes out coplanar to this and is not influenced by that lug of wood that's on there. And you'll be able to tell in the final edit that this was an unscripted video. The way that I am able to supersize the capacity of the joiner and flatten a thickness plane boards wider than its capacity is to use an auxiliary planer platen. This is just a piece of quarter inch melamine MDF and as long as the lug on the piece that I've run across the joiner is less than a quarter of an inch, I can slide this platen into the thickness planer. And I hope you can see this in the camera. But the lug of wood just hangs over the edge of this platen. And like I said, as long as that lug is, a is less than a quarter of an inch, the piece slides through the joiner referencing off the flat face so that the thickness planer can plane this surface smooth. And the pass on top is uninfluenced by the lug that hangs over on this side. I'll add squiggle marks to the surface. And you can see there's a step in the surface of that glued up board, which doesn't matter. This is all extra thick. And I've got the flat, smooth, straight surface on this side and the irregular rough surface on this side of the board. I'll run it through the planer, letting it glide across the surface of this MDF platen. You can take note that I've got a lug of oak screwed on the back of this platen and that just keeps this from sliding through the planer along with the wood being planed. After the first pass, you can see how some of the area is cleaned up where the board was thicker. These rough surfaces and that step are still in there, but another 32nd or 364th of an inch will have this side perfectly flat and smooth. And that's about as sweet as can be right there. I've got a piece here that's almost nine inches wide. It's all flat and smooth, even though my joiner is only eight inches. I've done this where the width of the piece is a full 12 inches wide, and using a full eight inch pass on the back side and cantilevering that four inches with the platen, and by taking light passes, I can get this second surface to be just as flat and smooth as the first eight inch surface. And the next step is to plane off this lug. I'll add squiggle marks to here, paying a special attention to this corner or this um, rabbited edge where the lug and the flat surface join. But all I do is flip the piece with the full flat side down and run this piece through the planer with the lug side up. And here again, as long as this lug is less than an eighth of an inch, I can just use the same planer setting and run it through and the planer will be planing this thickness here. If this lug sometimes, if, if it's 5 16ths of an inch or something, I have to raise the planer up accordingly and then take this lug down until the whole thing will go through in one pass. I hope that kind of makes sense. And you should be able to see that from that pass, the lug is gone. The rabbited edge is gone. There's a few squiggle marks out in here where there's a slight irregularity. The pass I made on the joiner wasn't quite deep enough to get this roughness out of here. 
but the bottom surface was flat without a twist. And once I've milled all the pieces to this stage, I can take the planer platen out and I have to lower the cutter head a quarter inch to get right back to this setting. So I'll go a quarter inch plus a 30 second and clean up this side. And I do that by turning the planer on, lowering the cutter head until it just engages the wood. I let it pull it through taking off a shaving and I give it just a little more of a twist to get the setting. Otherwise, I need to measure this, read the gauge, do all that adjusting. This way is just quicker. And that right there is pretty much the process for supersizing the capacity of your joiner using a planer platen. And a quarter inch is usually plenty. You could sure make this a half an inch if you had some really gnarly boards to deal with. If you're one of the lucky folks that has a 24 inch joiner in your shop, you don't need to worry about this whole video. I'll add a couple notes. It can be tricky when the lug is very shallow, a 32nd of an inch or so, because when you run the piece through, that lug can climb up on the platen. If it does that, it planes the board crooked and you kind of ruined it. So pay close attention to feeding the piece through the thickness planer on top of the platen so that the lug stays off of the planer's top surface. And in case anybody's getting any bright ideas thinking, wow, that's a pretty slick trick. I think I'm going to patent that. Well, I've been using a planer platen for quite a few years. And some time back, I submitted a platen pending for this idea. So I'm already a step ahead of you. And I bet you wish you would have shut the video off before I got to that part. Anyways, I appreciate you tuning in to Next Level Carpentry for this unscripted video. I'm going to try to put this together and get it published and uploaded. And then, as time allows, get back to that sawhorse build video that I've been promising for so long. I appreciate all the sharing you do for Next Level Carpentry on Insta, Google, Twitface. Anything you can do to promote the channel helps me, and I really appreciate it. Check out the Amazon Influencers page link in the video description. Any purchases made through links on that page don't cost you any more, but Amazon helps support this channel with a slight ad fee that's paid from any purchases there. I hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already. And as always, thanks for watching.